Hello guys, this is Dustin from Purely Evolved Gaming and this is going to be the start of the Arc Dev Kit tutorial series. Now this tutorial series is going to be for people who are interested in making their own maps for Arc or who are just simply interested in knowing the process that mappers go through when creating new maps for Arc. So when you first load up the dev kit you should see a scene similar to this. This is the test map area saved map that is basically just an example world that loads up when you start the dev kit. We aren't going to be using this um, for our map because we will be making a new level, so this won't be here for long. But first, what we're going to want to do is um, add in some stuff for some new tabs in our panes here. So if you come up to the top to this window button, click that, and then go down to World Settings and click on it. Go to Window again and click on Levels. Now when these pop up, they're most likely going to be in the middle of your screen. Um, just to get them in the panes, just click on the tab and drag it to where you want it. These panes on the side are fully customizable so you can have them set up however you want. I have them set up like this because this is how I like it. Yours might be set up different. It just depends entirely on your own personal preference. Now what we are going to do is come over to the content browser. Now click on the show or hide the sources panel. That will bring up kind of a navigation pane here and you're going to want to make sure that you click on the mods folder. Um, this is where we're going to save our map. You do not ever want to save your map in the maps folder. You always save in the mods folder. Now when that comes up you will see probably a few folders here. I have a lot more because I have made um, a few mods and maps. Um, you're going to want to right click on it and click new folder. And here you're going to enter the name of your map. If you don't have a name for it right now, you can enter a placeholder. Um, you can change that later on, but for now I'm going to enter Tutorial Map. Alright, so now what we're going to do is create our actual own level and get rid of this um, test map area. So come up to File and click on New Level, and then click on Default. should see something like this now, and if you click on this gray checkered plane here, you should see that sm underscore template underscore map underscore floor is selected in the scene outliner. Now what you're going to want to do is click your delete button and get rid of that thing. Alright, now you are left with this white emptiness here and that is your persistent level. Alright, so now what you're going to want to do is make sure you're in the levels tab here and by persistent level click this little green thing that says save level and this box will pop up. Make sure that you navigate to the mods folder into the folder that you just created and save your map with the exact same name as your folder then just click enter and you should see down here that your level name changes to tutorial map and it should say persistent behind it um, if it doesn't say that you did something wrong please go back and watch the video over again alright now what we're going to do is change some settings here so let's go ahead and click on light source in the scene outliner and then come to the details tab. You should see atmosphere sunlight. You want to uncheck that. That will help you out when you're creating your landscape because you don't have that unchecked and you hit that create button. Usually your dev kit will just crash the desktop with no error message and you'll be left wondering what the heck just did that. Well, not unchecking that is most likely the reason why that happened. All right, now we're gonna go to levels, click save go to world settings alright now in the search bar here we're going to type in world comp and you're gonna want to check enable world composition that will allow you to make sub levels based off of your persistent level alright now clear that out and you're gonna want to type in free base and you should see enable world origin rebasing you want to uncheck that that will help you out later on when you are adding in your foliage because um, you'll be in the level that you're painting your foliage in then you'll unload it load it back in and your foliage will be in a completely different spot that you don't want it in you don't want that to happen with that unchecked it will stay in the same spot and all will be good alright let's clear that out and now we'll go back to levels and save that again and real quick let's go ahead and click on levels and then go to create new. Um, you should still be in your tutorial map folder or whatever you have your folder named and you're going to want to create a new 
level called landscape sub level and just click enter and it should create it down below here that's going to be the level that you create your landscape in so you're going to want to double click on that and you know that it's selected when it's bolded because that will determine uh, show that you have that selected and you are currently in that level so now what we're going to want to do is come up here to the landscape tab click on it and real quick you will see this green area here that will be the size of your landscape once it is created now I'm just realizing that most of you probably don't know how to move around in the dev kit so real quick I'll just kinda give a brief overview of how to do that you hold your right mouse button um, you can look around if you hold the left mouse button you go forward and back I don't really ever use that um, your arrow keys move you right left forward back um, the mouse wheel going forward will speed you up going back will slow you down and then if you want to adjust your max camera speed you can come up here to camera speed and move this slider 8 is super fast 1 is super slow I usually keep it on 5 but that is how that works there alright so going back to the landscape here um, we will go through some of this stuff here so your material you will see that I have one called from the Universal Landscape Material, and I got that off the Arc Modding Wiki. Uh, I will include a link to that in the description of the video. Um, but basically, what this material is is it includes the layers that you have available to you to paint. So, with the Universal one, it includes layers from the island, the snow layer, and the scorched earth materials. Now, if you don't have that, you can type in mi underscore new island and select this material. That will just include the island materials, but you won't have the scorched earth materials or the snow materials. So I'm going to leave it on that. Then the location, rotation, and scale, do not touch any of that. Um, if you mess with that, you will have a lot of problems as soon as you get your map into the game, such as your character stuck in the map and you can't move. So don't even look at this. And then this stuff will just adjust the size of your map. Um, so you got section size, sections per component, number of components, and overall resolution. Um, I'm just going to leave this all at the default level because it will be fairly large anyways. So then you're just going to hit create. And this gray plane here is your unpainted landscape. So I'm going to go ahead and save everything real quick. And then double click on persistent level so that you're back in that level instead of the landscape sub level. Now what you're going to want to do is come up to the place tab and type in global and drag this global post process blueprint into your map. Um, that just gives a post process effect across the entire world here. Now come back down to your content browser and click on game and then that will you want to make sure that you have that clicked on so that you're searching through all the folders and not just the mods folder and you're gonna want to type in dirt underscore plane and you want to pick the one that is not in the Ragnarok folder so you want the primal earth one just drag that onto your map and what you're gonna want to do is adjust the scale so for this one I'm just gonna do like 20,000 and then on rotation for the X you're going to want to type in 180 that will make it visible because there is no underside on this and I have clearly made it way too big for this map but that is okay just showing what it basically is so if you look at the material here it's basically the ocean floor and what this does is it acts as your ocean floor and it makes the ocean look like it goes on forever past your maps borders so we're actually going to move this down a bit so it does not interfere with our landscape right now and it's out of the way alright so we are going to go to levels and click save and then go back into our landscape sub level now if we go back to the landscape tab you will see that there are three buttons on the top here you want to go to paint and once you're on paint you'll see that there are a variety of textures here that you can paint we're going to start off by painting the shared grass material so come down and um, 
you have to click on this arrow here. We'll bring a drop down menu and click on this layer info. And once you have that in there, you should see it actually in here. And I'm going to increase my brush size so the painting a little bigger. And then just left click and drag around and you should see a grass material. Um, so that is what that is. And you want to cover the entire thing with the grass. All right. So now we have a grass material applied to the entire map. This is it up close. And this is it far away. There is a different texture for near and far zoom levels. All right. So then if you want to say some beach sand, you come down to beach sands 01 and you enter in this one. And if you click, you can see that you can paint it in here. Um, sometimes when you click, there'll be like a gray box that shows up. It's just compiling shaders. Once that is gone, you'll be able to paint like normal. All right, so there is that. Um, let's kind of just show some of the other tools here. If you come over to Sculpt, you can see that once you click on this, there are a variety of tools here that you can use. Um, the three most popular ones that you're going to use are Sculpt, Smooth, and Flatten. So if you click on Sculpt um, and come down a little closer to the landscape, and if you left click, you can see that it raises up the landscape. You can make hills and stuff. So that can be helpful in making hills and mountains. So then we will go into the Flatten tool, and that basically just flattens it off at the same level useful for making plateaus and um, getting stuff to the same height and then you can go to the smooth tool um, I'm actually gonna lower down the brush size to 2000 because this tool does seem to lag out quite a bit and so basically it just smooths stuff out and that is also helpful for making mountains and hills there will be a, another video later on on how to make mountains um, by hand because it is pretty difficult and I'll show you a good method that I use when I make them. So that's basically just smoothing that out there. And that is essentially it for the landscape tools. Um, let's go ahead and go back to our place tab and go to details and click on landscape. All right, now you'll see that um, under your landscape tab here you have a landscape material and a landscape hole material now if you are using the universal material you'll see that there if you use the new island you should see that here now you want to enter in a landscape hole material this is basically going to be used for whenever you are making caves this allows you to cut holes into the landscape so I'm gonna go to my universal landscape material and I have a MI landscape material hole. And I'm just going to enter that into there. You should see it pop up there now. If you don't have the universal material, you can just type in MI underscore new island, and there should be a hole material you can put in there instead. And that will just allow you to create holes in your landscape for the caves. So for now, I think that is it for getting the dev kit set up and getting your first landscape put in. Um, so let's go ahead and go to levels and make sure that we save both of these. And I will see you again in the next tutorial video. Good luck modders.